Hello. Hello. Is this thing on? Because we're getting ready for the Empowered Podcast. I cannot wait to dive into today's topic, which is going to be the new theme for the entire month of July. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the Empowered Podcast. I am just so grateful that you are here. It is such a delight for me to be here. And if you've been following along for a while, then you know that I took a wee little hiatus for very good reason. I felt intuitively guided to, which to be honest, that is reason enough. But in case you're curious as to why, um, I just had a lot of deep inner healing that needed to happen. I had I could feel this was this was actually pre-COVID. This was before this global pandemic. It was even on it wasn't even on my radar. And I could feel this need for my energy to go inward. I could feel this need for me to have more space, more time, more um, privacy in a sense to just process emotions and feelings and experiences internally. And so I took it. I allowed myself to have that space and I am so grateful to those of you who are listeners and have been listeners for a while that you still are here (laughs) because I know that for some people that can be triggering, whereas for me, it just is how I have to do life because I am an empath and I'm a sensitive being and I'm a healer and I'm an intuitive, which means that when energy is flowing in a specific direction, when I feel intuitive guidance in a specific way, I got to take it. And it's taken me a long time, my entire 33 years of my life, to get to a place where I can say, yes, I am taking this space and this time for me. Yes, I'm following this intuitive guidance, even though I don't know why it's here or what it means. So that's a little bit about where I've been. I'm sure that in the upcoming episodes, I'm going to be sharing with you more of the actual work that I did. But today, I want to share with you something very exciting. I feel in my body, in my heart, in my mind, in my soul, I'm ready to be back creating weekly podcasts. So yay, that's a big win. Um, I know there's been a good handful of you or so that have been listening to old episodes, which is awesome. They are incredible. Yes, please go back, listen to the older episodes. Um, But moving forward, every Wednesday, you're going to be accessing a new Empowered Podcast episode. And I have some really incredible guests that I have lined up. And I'm going to continue seeking out amazing human beings that can come on and share their story, their wisdom, their knowledge, their gifts, all the pieces. So what I'm going to do is each month, I'm going to create a theme. Now, this might only be for July and August. I don't know, but I'm going to go with it until it doesn't feel right anymore. So the theme for July is resiliency. And you, if you've been following along on this podcast, if you've been following me on Instagram or Facebook, you know that I talk about resiliency a lot in terms of emotional resiliency, which is really about the ability to process the emotions that are occurring within your body and come back to a state of neutrality on a regular basis. Because neutral is really where we want to be. We don't want to be super high. We don't want to be super low. We want to be at a neutral foundational baseline so that we can handle anything that comes our way from that place. So you normally hear me talk about it like that. But for this month, we're going to talk about resiliency in terms of what it actually is, what it means. And similar to the emotional aspect, for me, it's really about what it means to be an empowered woman. To be an empowered woman means that you have resiliency and that you are resilient in all the things that have occurred in your life. I know that you listening to this right now, you have been through some shit. I know you have, because you wouldn't be here if you hadn't. You wouldn't be drawn to to my words or my work or my community at all if you hadn't, because those are some of the things that we talk about. Those are some things that I talk about. And I also know that as a human being who is past the age of five, it's quite challenging to not have had any struggles, not to have had any challenges. And I really want to bring some awareness for you in this coming month of how incredibly resilient you are. So taking some space and time to acknowledge you've actually been through a lot. You've actually made it through more than you probably ever thought that you would. And it's just so easy to focus on where we want to go and focus on what we want to accomplish and what we want to achieve and how we want to serve and how we want to show up for others that we tend to forget where we come from. We tend to forget what we've already been through. 
And um, so today is uh, the end of June. I don't know the date. <laughs> and just yesterday, I shared a post. If you follow me online, you'll remember this. I shared a post of myself in a bikini and it was two photos. And then I talked about how the day previous, I let myself go into a really deep, dark, scary place of self-loathing due to negative body talk. And I shared the depths of what that feels like for me. And this post got a crazy amount of comments and private messages to me because of it, which is incredible, both on Instagram and Facebook. It's amazing that it gets so much traction. That's fabulous. But at the same time, that sucks because that means that so many of you who are listening right now can relate to that idea of negative self-talk when it comes to your body, of body dysmorphia. And when I think about the experience, so I shared that post and then I did a Facebook live because I felt like this conversation cannot be over yet. We need to keep going. If you want to watch that, you can either watch it on my Facebook, Deanna Dean Coaching, or go to my YouTube channel. I I uploaded it there as well. Um, And it's basically me just on a soapbox talking about women and how skewed our society is when it comes to us and our bodies and how each of us need to do our own individual work so that we can do the work collectively to shift these narratives, to shift this internal dialogue, myself included in that. Um, But even today, this was two days ago, yesterday? No, I think it was yesterday. I just was reflecting on this situation and what occurred and just, you know, sitting and thinking and feeling. And I realized that even though for that full day, I went into some heavy darkness, I started to notice that that, well, that used to be my every day. That was just normal to me. It was normal to think loathing thoughts of my body. It was normal to feel like I had too much weight or I would never look the way I wanted to, or that I should stop eating as much or that I should go exercise more. Like it, that was just a normal everyday occurrence for me. And what I reflected on today was, yes, I went into that dark place for that day, but then the next day it shifted. I felt good. I spent almost the entire day naked in my house and I did that on purpose to allow myself to really honor my body and witness my body in its true form. (laughs) And today I feel incredible. I've had such a great day and it really made me realize that I was able to shift out of that fairly quickly. If you think about it, I mean, one day of body loathing in comparison to a lifetime of body loathing, I'd say is a pretty big feat. And I'm just celebrating myself right now for how far I've come for how much I have shifted and changed in my own internal dialogue and thoughts around the negativity towards my body. And it feels so freaking good to know that I've created these changes. And these are the types of things when it comes to resiliency that we don't often spend time looking at because we're always looking to the future. But because I was reflecting on this experience that occurred, I got to see how far I've come. I got to see the growth that I've created for myself. I am so freaking committed to my own spiritual growth and evolution and personal development and expanding my knowledge and becoming a better leader and coach and mentor and and healer in whatever way that looks. I'm super freaking committed. But because of that, I don't really notice the day-to-day growth that I experience. You know, like it just, think my life just shifts. I just, I don't know, start doing things differently and it feels good and that's great. And it takes looking back to acknowledge how far I've come to witness that all of this daily commitment that I've been doing, all of these meditations, all of this body love, all of this uh, teaching different body positive fitness styles, all of this coaching with other women, all of these podcast episodes, everything is all adding up to me having this growth. And I want you to see the same for yourself, that where you are right now, this moment right now, every single choice you've made in your life has brought you to this place, which means that even all those hardships, you chose to move through them. You chose to find your path. You chose to step in a different direction and try something else. You chose to pull on that like inner grit and resiliency within you to make it through. You chose to find the joy. You chose to find the possibility. You chose to be here. 
And yeah, maybe your life isn't perfect, but like, girl, there's no such thing. <laughs> Just let it go. There's no such thing. So yes, of course, you could sit here and think about all the things that you don't have yet or that you want to achieve and that you haven't yet. But why? Does that make you feel good? Does it make you feel good to notice how far you have yet to go? I don't know about you, but for me, no, it don't feel so good. So why don't we do the opposite? Why don't we notice how far you've come? Why don't we notice what you've accomplished and all the crap you've been through and how you've made it through? Why don't we notice how incredible you are? Whether or not you believe that your personal journey or your story is you know, worthy of being told. This is something I used to struggle with until my mom passed when I was 19. Um, I used to think like, my life is so easy. I feel like I can't complain about anything because everything's so easy. And now over the years I've reflected and realized, actually, I had a lot of challenges. I, you know, my parents worried I was suicidal. I was really extremely bullied. I was, um, just, just had a, a lot of challenges internally being an empath and being in a household that didn't even know what that word meant. But just because your story might not be the most shocking story that you could tell doesn't mean it's not worthy of being told or celebrated. I think it's really important that we acknowledge that whatever feels like a hardship to you, whether it looks like or feels like a hardship to someone else, that doesn't matter. If it feels like a hardship to you, it's a hardship because you create your reality. If you're experiencing pain, it's painful. That doesn't mean it's painful for somebody else. It means it's painful for you. And that's all that matters. So if you've gone through even one experience of experiencing hardship or pain and coming through it the other side, girl, you are resilient. And I want to celebrate you. I'm sending you spirit fingers right now. All the love through my spirit fingers. (laughs) It's just, we spend so much of our time focusing on the crap. We focus on the crap. We just do. It's just, it seems to be like a natural tendency for us. I think it's just because we're culturally conditioned that way. But I really, for this this whole month, this theme, I really want to focus on you finding the joy, on you finding your own inner resiliency. So I want you to take a moment, take a pause, let out your breath, and then take a nice deep inhale. Release it through your mouth. Maybe shake your shoulders and ask yourself, what does resiliency mean to you? What does it mean to be resilient? Mm. Go ahead and if you want, you can pause this and keep exploring that further. But for me, immediately, as soon as I went into that question and closed, I closed my eyes for it, I saw this shining star. And to me, a shining star, if you think about it, the stars are shining all the time, but it's only, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> it's only in the darkness of night that you can truly see their shine, that you can truly see their light. And I believe that every single one of us is like a star. We are shining all the time, always, 24-7, all the time. We never stop. We are shining our light always. Your soul is always showing its light through you in every single moment. But it often takes the darkness for us to notice how bright our light really is. It often takes the night or the dark or the dark night of the soul for us to begin witnessing and experiencing how incredible we are, how bright we are, how loving we are, how resilient we are. Yeah. So notice that, that in those dark moments is when you were able to finally witness your light. And maybe you didn't fully embody it, or maybe you just kind of pass it off like nothing. That's okay. But I want you to go back to that time now and ask yourself, wow, Like, how did I do that? How did I make it through that? How did I find my way through that? And if you're trying to tell me right now in your head, your ego is like, yeah, but I don't have any of those stories. For a second, I want you to consider, have you not just been going through a global pandemic? Have you not just been experiencing in the United States this massive movement called Black Lives Matter? 
Have you not been experiencing life right now, which often is freaking hard? <laughs> like, hmm, there is so much magic and there's so much joy in this world. And there's also a lot of pain and suffering and hardship and worry and doubt and fear and all of the negativity, all of the darkness at the same time as the light. It's our job. It's our duty as human beings that are awakening to our pure consciousness, as human beings that are choosing to step into our own personal empowerment, as human beings who desire to be a leader, to be a mentor, to be a guide, even just for your partner or your children or your family members or for the global landscape, whoever it is you see yourself leading or, or guiding, it is your duty and job to start choosing to see the light. That's it. That's all you have to do. I um, oh, I don't have the book here, but I'm running a, a course right now called the Intuition Series. It's an incredible course. It's to be honest, it's beyond what I could have come up with. It was all intuitively guided, and it's a five module course that's solely focused on you learning how to get out of your own way so your intuition can flow through you so that your soul energy can be your guiding light instead of your ego, your mind, your physical body, your emotions, etc. cetera. Uh, it's a really powerful program for empaths because we start learning how to release energy and release those energetic blocks so you can live more intuitively guided. This program, first of all, from my perspective, from putting it together and leading this program, holy crap, it's just like blown me wide open because every single time, every single time I tap into that energy of the teachings, it's so deeply connected to my soul and my soul's purpose. I can feel it. This is different than anything else I've ever taught. So anyways, in this program, there's five modules. I think it was um, the third module that I shared a quote by Gabrielle Bernstein, her book, Super Attractor, which is at the time of this podcast, her most recent book that she's had in Super Attractor. She talks about, oh my God, it's so funny. I started thinking about the intuition series and I totally lost my train of thought. I don't even know what I was going to tell you about Gabby. <laughs> huh? Maybe I just wanted to tell you about the book. There's a quote in there that if I can find it, I'll put it in the show notes if I can remember what it is or I'll post it somewhere. Um, but anyways, Super Attractor by Gabrielle Bernstein is a really great book. I followed her for probably about five years now. I was really super triggered by her when I first saw one of her first videos. I was like, who's this girl? Who she thinks she is? What is she doing? Anyways, and that was just because I could see that she was so embodied in her strength and in her power and her confidence. And I wished that for myself. So that's why I was resistant to her was, um, man, she embodies everything that I want, which wasn't my dialogue at the time. At the time it was like, man, I don't like that girl. <laughs> Anyways, I followed her for quite a long time. I've read, I have a lot of her books. I've read a lot of her books. I've, I've done different meditations with her. And I would say that Super Attractor the book that came out, I think it came out at the end of 2019 or early 2020. I don't remember. Um, I would say this is one of her best books because I feel like she does, she didn't hold back. I think in the past, I think she's very, very spiritual and very esoteric, but in the past, I feel like she was trying to please her audience. Maybe this is my interpretation um, of her writing. And in this book, I feel like she just didn't hold back. She let it all out. She talks about channeling Wayne Dyer, which is incredible. And when she gives you some guidance of being able to do the same, and I started tapping in and I, I, I could feel the energy that to me was representative of Wayne Dyer, who, if you don't know Wayne Dyer, please go look him up and get some of his books. They're incredible. He was, he was he's passed now, but he was an incredible spiritual teacher. Anyways, I don't even know where I'm going with all this. Like I said, I forgot my train of thought, but if you haven't read that book, you should probably check it out. It's really, it's a good one. Uh, and while we're on the topic of books, if you have not read Rise, Sister, Rise by Rebecca Campbell, I just lent that one out to a friend who hadn't read it, which blew my mind. I didn't even know there were people who haven't read this book yet. Um, go get it. Rise, Sister, Rise by Rebecca Campbell. Go do it now. You will, you will thank me later. <laughs> it's a powerful book. <sighs> Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to come back. I'm going to ground back in. Resiliency. <sighs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to bring this episode to a close because for this month, I have some really, really incredible individuals that I'm going to be having conversation with and sharing our conversation with you. Um, they have some really beautiful stories and missions and 
life purposes that I really want you to receive in here. And until then, I want you to spend some time journaling on resiliency. I want you to explore what is the definition of resiliency for you? What does resiliency feel like in your body? Who do you think of when you think of the word resilient? What experiences in your life have brought you to this place of feeling resilient within yourself? What have you made it through? What have you gone through? What have you accomplished? What have you completed for yourself? You know? Yeah. So I want you to journal on those questions. Apparently this is your soul work. If you haven't worked with me as your coach before, this is, this is a thing. I create a lot of soul work for my amazing clients because I love the idea of having a deep conversation, getting deep into the energetics of it, and then putting it into practice in your day-to-day life like actually putting pen to paper, actually, even if you want to record a voice note in your phone of your thoughts and your experience, you don't have to share it with anybody, but it helps you get more clear on what's occurring in your mind. And it helps you differentiate between ego and observer as well. So that's your homework for this week. Next week, I will be back with an episode with a really just such a special woman. I'm so excited to share her with you. And, and that's that. That's that for now. So if this episode has brought something to you, if you've noticed that there's a different thought pattern or something triggered like, oh, I get that, or oh, I want to explore that more, can you please do me a favor and share this episode with someone that you think would benefit from that too? I absolutely love gifting and giving of myself in this way, and I love it even more when it gets gifted and given to others. I really have this this deep, deep mission to take these principles and these teachings and these conversations to as many women as possible because I'm, I'm tired of all of us feeling like we're not good enough. I'm tired of all of us feeling like we're supposed to look a certain way. I'm tired of us believing that we can't have everything that we want because we can. We absolutely can. There is nothing holding us back except for our own ego. That is it. That is it. And we got to start living that way. That's what I'm committed to. That's what I'm here for. That's who I'm here to be for you. That vision or guide or light of it's possible. That's what I hope that you receive from this is seeing within yourself how possible you are, how amazing you are, how resilient you are. I want you to walk away from these episodes like, damn, mm, I feel great. That's what I want. Okay. I love you. I'm grateful that you're here. I'm so, so grateful you're here. New episodes on Wednesdays, Wednesday morning. Uh, Go ahead and follow, share, do all the things, spread the love. I love you so much. I'll talk to you soon.